Welcome to the next teaching unit in the chapter on crystalline silicon solar modules. In the last unit we dealt with how solar cells are connected to form cell strings in solar modules. We've seen that shading has a great influence on the performance of such a cell string and therefore bypass diodes are integrated into the circuit. Now we look at the efficiency of a solar module. Just as for a solar cell, we can determine the various electrical parameters for a solar module, such as the short circuit current, the open circuit voltage, the fill factor and the efficiency. We have seen that the IV curve of a cell string can be derived from that of a single solar cell. The parallel connection of solar cells increases the current of the cell string, while the series connection increases the voltage. What about the efficiency and the fill factor? In the ideal case that no cells are shaded, one would expect that the efficiency and the fill factor of cells in the corresponding module are identical. In practice, however, this is not the case, since some additional losses occur in the module. Firstly, there are ohmic losses in the cell connectors between the cells. In addition, there may be slight deviations in the electrical properties of the individual cells. These deviations are also called mismatch. If one cell has a slightly lower short circuit current than the others, its current determines the string current of all cells connected in series. Correspondingly, for cells connected in parallel, the string with the lowest voltage determines the module voltage. Overall, module voltage and current are thus somewhat lower than in the ideal case, in which all cells are identical. As a result, the efficiency and fill factor are also lower. In practice, the cells are therefore pre-sorted according to similar short circuit current and open circuit voltage before being connected to form cell strings in order to keep the cell mismatch as low as possible. In addition, the efficiency also decreases due to the packing density of the cells in the module. We can define the packing density as the sum of the area of all cells in the module divided by the module area. In the case of a monocrystalline silicon module, there are gaps between the solar cells due to the pseudo-square shape of the wafers. The area of multicrystalline silicon cells can better be utilized. However, as we have seen in the first lesson, these cells have a lower efficiency than monocrystalline solar cells. All the reasons listed here lead to the fact that the efficiency on module level is about 2 to 3 percent absolute lower than on cell level. At the present time, that is in November 2021, the efficiency record for crystalline silicon modules is 24.4%. The corresponding cell efficiency is 26.7%. Let's have a look at the composition of a typical crystalline silicon module. Since the cells are very thin, the cell strings are not very resistant to mechanical stress. In addition, the cell connectors and the contact grids on the solar cells are sensitive to moisture. Therefore, the cell strings are embedded in two films of encapsulant. For this purpose, usually ethylene vinyl acetate, also called EVA, is used. On the front side, the module ends with a glass pane. The glass pane protects the module from moisture, dust, rain, snow, but also from hail. For photovoltaic modules, special solar glass is used that contains less iron than normal window glass. This makes it even more transparent to incident light. Strong reflection occurs at the glass pane, just like at the solar cell. Therefore, the front glass of solar modules is also coated with an anti-reflective layer. Of course, this layer must be optimized for the refractive index of glass, so different materials are used here than on the cell surface. 
typical values for the solar transmission of unlaminated solar glass coated with an antireflective layer are 94.5%. However, this value increases to 98.5% when the glass is optically coupled with a solar cell, as an optical interface with 4% losses is omitted. Antireflective coatings have the disadvantage that they cannot withstand the weather indefinitely and can also degrade depending on the climate in which the solar module is used. Therefore, there are also textured solar glasses. Again, the function is quite similar to the texturing of solar cells. When texturing the front glass, it must be remembered that more dust also settles on a textured glass and that self-cleaning by rain is reduced. On the rear side of the cell, the module ends with a back sheet film. This film provides additional protection against moisture and insulates the back of the module. In single-sided modules, a compound film is usually used as back sheet. These films are usually white and are highly reflective. Thus, they additionally serve as a diffuse backside reflector, allowing photon recycling of light not absorbed by the solar cell with the help of total internal reflection at the front cover glass. Finally, the model is enclosed in a frame, which is usually made of aluminum. The frame increases the rigidity of the module, serves to fix the model to the substructure and also protect the edges. The space between the glass pane and the frame is usually sealed with silicon, silicone or a rubber band. The junction box is also attached to the rear side of the module. The tin-plated copper conductors of the cell strings are brought together in the junction box. The junction box also includes the necessary connection cable and plugs the connected PV module with other modules or an inverter. In addition, the bypass dials are installed here in the junction box. While there is a central junction box in the full cell modules, it is often divided into three parts in the half cell modules. Here each bypass diode is located in its own junction box. Here you can see a typical production line for PV modules. This production line consists of several stages in which special machines assemble the various parts of a module in a mainly automatic process. The processes of the different manufacturers differ from each other, but most of them include the following steps. In the first steps, the cells are soldered together in the stringer to form cell strings. In the next step, the layup, the laminate is prepared. Here the module is built up backwards, so that the glass is the bottom at the point. An EV a film is placed on top of the glass and then the prepared cell strings are positioned on top of it. The wool stack is then finished with a second EVA film and a back sheet film. In the next step, this module package is placed in the laminator, where it is heated to about 150 degrees C. During this process, the EVA film melts and flows into the cavities between the cells. As it cures, the EVL film bonds the glass, the cells and the back sheet together and ensures that the components are optically coupled. This bond is very durable and difficult to separate again later. This is a particular problem for the recycling of solar modules, which we'll look at in more detail later. After the lamination process, the laminate is framed and the junction box is attached to the module. Finally. The PV module is tested in a flasher and optionally other tests such as an electroluminescence test are performed. To summarize, we've learned in this learning unit 
that PV modules have a somewhat lower efficiency than the cells themselves due to a mismatch of the cells, additional ohmic losses in the cell connectors and the packaging density of the cells. The core of the PV module is a laminate consisting of the solar cells, an encapsulate material, a front glass and a back sheet. In addition to the laminate, the module also consists of a frame and a junction box. You have now learned about all the main steps on the way to the finished PV module and know their importance for the functioning of a PV module made of crystalline silicon solar cells. With this unit, we thus conclude the chapter on crystalline silicon solar modules.